Hi, hello, and welcome to a Project Zomboid 10 years later challenge. Now, it doesn't seem like much of a challenge because it's only 10 years in the future, but I only have a very small amount of hours in this game, so I'm sure you uh, hardcore Project Zomboid fans are really going to roast me in the comments for this. Not only this, but I have never played this map before, so I have no idea what to expect. This is also my first time ever playing the 10 years later mod, so I also don't know what to expect in the mod. Uh, it's all going to be a new experience for me. But anyways, I'm rambling on now. Let me show you what I've decided to do to my character, traits, etc. For my traits, I decided to go with Burglar because for me personally, it's usually a good skill to go with to get that extra nimble ability right at the start and have the ability to break open cars. I started off with the negative skill points as I think it's easier to do it this way. And so I picked pretty much the best ones to deal with such as underweight, slow reader, smoker etc. Now it was time for the positive traits. So I wanted to start off by getting strong because personally I think strong is the best early game positive skill point you can have. It really helps boost your strength and the ability to carry stuff. I know it's expensive but trust me it is a guaranteed win if you use this positive trait. I then picked up Inconspicuous, Outdoorsman and Light Eater. Now it was time to design my beautiful character, and the name Derek Hirschberger wasn't really doing it for me, so I randomised it a bit. I did this until I got the absolute perfect Greg Joy, to which I liked him a lot, and so I thought I'd just stick with this guy. I thought his name was kind of ironic for the situation we're in, so we'll just stick with him. I decided he needed a bit of stubble and to change that awful Hawaiian shirt. And with that, we are ready to start. I spawned alone in a garage in some kind of city. My first thought was to get a weapon from somewhere, given that this is a garage that shouldn't be too difficult. I ended up finding a wrench, and that would do just fine for now. It was now time for me to explore the outside world, so I opened up the front gate, had a look around at the massive open world that is Project Zomboid, except this time it is widely overgrown. I tried this first door on the right here, and of course it's locked, so I'd have to find another way around. As I came around the building I spotted my first Zomboid laying against a wall, and then my second Zomboid just next to me. I went around the building further and found this nice blue car and decided to check it out. Back of the car I found some toilet paper, which looking back after recording this, I probably should have picked up. The car was in disrepair, so I hopped over this fence over here, and this is where I fought my first Zomboids. and found an annotated map for the town Louisville. Now this seemed pretty useful, except I wasn't in Louisville. In fact, I was nowhere near Louisville. I then stole someone's bloody jacket and someone else's nice fancy watch. I was really putting my burglar trade to good use. I guess a heroic member of the deceased public heard about my burgling antics and tried to stop me. She didn't get very far however, because I beat her head in with a wrench. After disposing two other members of the public, I quickly made my way into the food market. This window was locked, so I quickly and quietly smashed the crap out of it. One more wrench beating later, and I was in the food market. Surrounded by fresh food? What? I thought this was supposed to be a 10 years later challenge. Well, how about we all just ignore that for now? Um. I don't really have an explanation for it, okay? I, I, I set it to 30 days later. The fruit shouldn't be fresh, but it is, so we'll just deal with it, okay? Okay. After filling myself with all kinds of fruits and vegetables, I made my way over to a magazine rack where I'd hoped to find some dirty magazines. Unfortunately, I only found some maps for places that are, again, way too far from me. 
slightly disappointed, I made my way over to the cash registers where I heard a strange growling noise, and I had no idea where it was coming from, so, uh, you know, being the adventurous type, I thought I'd go check it out, and oh god, was this a bad idea. After soiling my pants, I quickly tried to run out of the area, but then I needed food. So I decided to just, you know, grab a can of sardines on the way out, just as a parting gift. And then I got the hell out of there. I retraced my footsteps back to the blue car from earlier and made my way up the alley. I should have picked up the toilet paper here again, and yet, I didn't. I came across three quite nice looking cars and decided to check them out, especially the top one looked in really good condition. After killing a zomboid I spotted another one wearing fireman's clothes. Now fireman clothes are really good protection, bite wise and scratch wise, so I had to take him out with blunt force trauma. Along with these two people as well. Looking much better, I go to check out this nice looking car. The door and the boot was locked. However, once checking the front of the car, I came to realise that it had fuel and it was in really good condition. This was a really nice find early in the playthrough, as cars are really useful. I'd definitely be coming back to this later. Further down I spotted a building on the opposite side of the road and went to go take a look. I'd quickly find out that this was in fact a police station and out front was parked a news van. I wasn't really interested in the news van though as there was a literal police station in front of me and I wanted to get geared up to the teeth. The first door I tried was locked, however, a door just around the corner happened to be open. In the front desk I found a pack of cancer, and thank god for that because I picked the smoker trait, and if I didn't get my fix soon, god knows what I was going to do. This part of the police station was seemingly filled with offices, and holy shit that is a lot of zombies. I found a kitchen where I drowned away my sorrows with a pint of milk. It turned out that I was in the wrong part of the police station. There was no other way into the other side that was locked here, so I had to again incorporate my burgling skills and very, very quietly go through this window. <laughs> Upon entering the police station, I immediately found the door to the armory. However, I don't think my wrench could break through it easily, so I checked out the rest of the building first, where I found this woman, who I then bashed her head in. Strangely, the kitchen was connected to some kind of shower locker room, and in that locker I found some military equipment. Now, it seemed tempting to put on this military equipment, however, my fireman's gear is still better than it, so I kept it on. It was at this point where I decided to test my wrench on this door, and surprisingly, after 10 or so hits, it actually broke. Inside, I found an absolute boatload of weapons. Now, these were very tempting to take. However, they were very heavy, and I didn't really want to create a lot of noise in the area yet until I clear out a lot of the zombies, but I'd definitely be coming back for these later, which is why I marked them down on my map, along with the cars and the grocery store. I then left the police station where I came in and quickly came across a lot of zomboids. <laughs> Beating up a load of zombies with my wrench, I decided I need a well-deserved smoke break. 
This break didn't last long though, because I realised that I was getting tired and I needed somewhere to sleep. But first, it was time for more zombie killing. However, I was quickly ambushed from behind by another group of what seemed to be 10 to 15 zombies, so I fled quickly to the police station. I was now tired and exhausted, so I decided to sit on the floor and think about my life choices. Looking on my map, I spotted a small building not too far from me, so I decided to go check it out. I could hear zombies banging on the back door, so I decided to go through another window. <laughs> Quietly, of course. I hopped through and just ran for it. I had no idea how many zombies were at this back door, but I wasn't about to find out. The forest was dense, and it even tried to scare me with the zombie. I was way too exhausted to fight this battle. I had to just run and find somewhere safe to stay. The building just so happened to be some toilets. And not only that, but they wouldn't let me in. The doors were locked. If only I had that toilet paper from earlier, they might have let me in. Okay, time for plan B. I had to get inside of a building somehow, and I just had to hope that the door was open. That's all I needed, just an open door. That was extremely lucky. I had made my way inside of a school, which could be a good place to find a backpack, so I started searching the classrooms and the lockers for hopefully some extra storage. It wasn't too long until I found a bag inside one of the lockers. Just down the hallway there was a janitor's closet, and in that closet was a sink. I used it to clean all of my clothing, and myself. Just because we're in a zombie apocalypse, doesn't mean I can't be squeaky clean. Whilst checking another classroom, I found Carpentry Volume 1. This was going to be really useful to help get my carpentry to level 2 quick early game. This would allow me to build water collectors, which was going to be really useful once the water shuts off. At this point, I was really tired, so I decided to sleep for the night, and I woke up close to 6. I heard some zombies outside in the hallway, so I decided to check my wrench condition, and it was nearly broken. If I was going to fight these zombies, I'm going to need a different weapon, or to just run past them completely. With no luck finding a new weapon, I decided to just risk it, and my wrench broke on the first hit. This zombie, I had to push repeatedly into a corner, and then stomp her head in until she died. I decided to try and find another weapon, however, most of the classrooms had zombies in them, especially this one down here, which I regret opening. I was forced down the hallway into a woodworking shop, and here I decided to bunker down, because I knew I'd find a weapon. I realised it wouldn't be long until those zombies broke down those doors and made its way to mine. A metal bar. This'll work. The banging on the doors was getting louder, and I knew it wasn't long until they broke down. I would have to fight. It was now, or never. Hi everyone. This is my first proper YouTube video that I've really put the time and effort into editing. So any support or anything like that will be super appreciated. Just tell me what you think about it in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.